This is Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God, because God is speaking to you and me and the church and the world. And in these episodes, we get to listen in on the conversations that he's having with us through these encounters with angels, divine interventions, prophetic dreams, visions, near-death experiences. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. Welcome. Being someone who uh, wandered away for many, many, many years myself, I certainly see the uh, fingerprints of Jesus' mom all over my conversion going to get me and bringing me back, and you'll, you'll see those same fingerprints in this episode. You have mother and daughter, Ramona and Fallon. You have one in this spiritual coma, that's mom, and she just needs to be awakened and is. And then you have the daughter who's in an actual physical coma for six months, and Mary shows up there as well. The fingerprints are all over this episode. I know you'll enjoy it. It's not as great a uh, Zoom connection as I wish, but uh, I, th- I think we'll make do here. I think we will. As we, uh, we talk to Ramona in Australia. Hello. There you Hello. are. How are you doing? <laughs> it's 4 a.m. my time and 6 p.m. your time. Oh, I know. I'm really sorry about that. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry about that stuff. Don't worry. Were you, were you raised in Australia? I wasn't raised in Australia. I was raised back in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome back from Magigora. You were over there, right? You just got back a little bit. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. It's amazing. Amazing place. Did you have an experience there? Apparition Hill or something? Yes. Yes, I did. I went up to um, Little Fenced Area and I was kneeling there and praying, praying for each and everyone that had asked me for prayer, praying for my family and everyone. And I was just in so much deep prayer, talking to Um, our blessed mother and all of a sudden I had this wind come through it was like a gale so powerful and then I still kept talking and I said Mama Mary I know you're here I know you're hearing my prayers another wind like a real big gale then I finished my prayers and I went up to my friend and I said to her did you feel that wind and she goes what wind there's no wind today (laughs) Well, for some of you, there was. (laughs) And we were blessed enough to stay with Miriana. Oh, she's wonderful. Uh, One of the visionaries. She's wonderful. It's amazing about Mariana to me, and I was just listening to part of what she said when we were there because we recorded it, um, is that she has told the story four, four billion times, but she still tells the story because she knows that's what everybody wants to know, what she saw, what she heard. You know, all of that. And she received the 10 secrets very, very early on. And, uh, but, but she still tells the story over and over because she knows that's what people want to know. And, and she's telling it like she doesn't shrug her shoulders and go, okay, I'll do it again. You know, she just, she just tells the story, you know, uh, God bless her. Yeah. Ramona, Catholic, but just going through the motions, whether it's going to mass, praying the rosary, going through the motions, uh, in her own coma, so to speak. My mom used to say, you are praying, but you're not really praying because you're not. The relationship wasn't there. Yeah, not actually having the faith to know and trusting in God. But back in 2013, when daughter Fallon was 17 years of age, she was hit with a particular seizure. I was just sitting there. She she had that seizure and then uh, my other daughter was home. So my husband and I and my, my daughter, said, my other older daughter, she said to me, Mom, we won't call an ambulance. We'll just take her to the hospital. They drive her daughter to the hospital and the seizures continue. They can't stop the seizures. They induce a coma. They bring her out of the coma. Seizures continue. They, they do this back and forth, back and forth thing. Six months because the seizures don't stop. One day we were home getting ready to go to the hospital and we got a call from the hospital to say uh, things are not looking good Um, we need you here maybe you will have to say your last goodbye so things are very bad Uh, a priest is called to administer sometimes it's called the anointing of the sick used to be called last rites he somehow he had this feeling he didn't have to he didn't want to give last rites as he was leaving He had told my husband and my older daughter, look, as I was praying over uh, Fallon, um, 
Pope John Paul appeared to me and he said to me that she will live and to just keep praying for her. This this Pope John Paul II experience, Saint Pope John Paul II, and he sees Saint John Paul II with Fallon. And so I didn't find out this till weeks later. When you, when you went through this process and, and found out later, was there any more information about the circumstance of seeing John Paul for that particular priest? I mean, like dressed in a certain way, looking a certain way, saying a certain thing. Uh, what, what, any more details to that? No, all he said was, um, he said he was, his, he was laying over Fallon's bed. So he was on the side, but he was sort of laying over his, her bed because um, father was holding on to her head and praying. So when he lifted his head up, he saw her laying over her bed. That's all that he said. Does this priest normally have these kinds of events happen for him, these kinds of visions? Do you know? Not, um, not that I know of, anyway. So this was different for him, too. Mm, mm. Meanwhile, they have all these friends and family, 70, 75 people in the ICU. They're all praying. They're praying their rosary and at times smelling roses, Mary's, uh, Mary's sign that she's there. Yeah, at that time, I didn't know what, what it was, but later on, I got to know that the smell of roses is our Blessed Mother being around us. Right. As we were ending the rosary, it would be really strong around us. And then as we finish, it will just leave us. And things start improving. Just the power in that rosary that I, I just felt it there. Daughter Fallon's blood pressure is very low. And they say, we want to try steroids again. It hadn't worked up to this point, but they try again. And this time. The nurse said to me, your daughter's blood pressure is starting to slowly come back. We went home. We all prayed the rosary there. And um the next morning, I woke up and I rang the hospital, and um, they said, "Well, her her blood pressure has come back, back to normal." And then, then the next day, she opened her eyes for the first time. I think yeah, it was just then that my faith just took a turn. That's when she started uh, saying to me, "Mom, I have I have someone who's always with me." Your your daughter, you said she had a sense there was someone there, a woman. She her sense was yeah, a woman. Yeah, when she was in the ward, when she was in the ward, she had a sense of someone being there. And then um, on my birthday the next year, this was two thousand and fourteen, as I was putting her in bed and praying praying with her, then she said, "Mom, I'm really scared." I said, "Why are you scared, darling?" And she said, "I have this." I have this beautiful lady and she's with baby Jesus because she had a picture of our little infant Jesus on her wardrobe. And she showed me that and she said, I've got a little, uh, she, she comes with the little infant Jesus. I said, that is Mama Mary. And she goes, Mom, she's so beautiful. I cannot even describe a woman in this world that is so beautiful. And um, she said, but she's not saying anything. She's just there. And that's when I started. I knew for sure that that was our Blessed Mother coming with infant Jesus to protect her and give her assurance. That, that's when my, my conversion was gradually happening, but it really happened then. And then I started a prayer group. And um, yeah, my faith got really stronger from there on. Um, so here we are kind of that 10, 11 years down the road. Yeah. Um, did Mary and Jesus, uh, start disappearing or what happened? After that, she didn't have anything. She didn't have any, she didn't have any vision, but now she, she's been having dreams. Interesting prophetic dreams. Fallon sees her friends who have walked away from the church and from her for all intents and purposes. God is telling her not to be worried about uh, what they do to her or how they are not. See, they keep saying to her all the time um, because they all drifted away from her. So she's been really concerned about that and she's been praying about it a lot. Mom, Jesus gives me, in my dreams, he says to me that she, they will all come back to me. 
she sees her role in bringing them back, that God is going to make this happen. She sees um, visions in the sky of our Blessed Mother and so a sort of like assurance that, you know, that she will be okay and she's not to be troubled by what the world is do doing and saying to her. Boy, through your daughter. Okay, now let's go back through. So your process, you're someone who's the sleepwalkers, you know? Yeah. How did you hear about the priest and the John Paul experience and that she was going to be okay? How did that come to light? Oh, I didn't hear about that till um, I actually gave her testimony in the church. This was going back a few months, maybe six months or so after. When I, uh, when the priest actually said it to the people, after I had given my testimony, I was like, what? And then my husband and my da older daughter said to me, yes, mommy, Father Martin told us that. And I said, wow, I didn't even know anything about it. I, I love the fact that you guys were in church and you're actually talking about this because there really is no venue to talk about miracles. It's crazy to me. But so what was this event in, or, or was this at a mass oh. after mass or after mass? Yeah. Because this priest was, he was having, he was telling all the priests around to pray for my daughter. And so he said to me, he said, when you're, when you're ready, you need to give testimony. I am I am so pleased <laughs> that he wanted this yes. witnessed in front of the congregation because we we, yes. we we just don't acknowledge this stuff. And because this is what brings you to pray. When you hear this kind of story, exactly. you go, Oh, you mean my prayer actually matters and God's listening and yes. you know Mary can be there and Jesus and all of this. And it's like it brings it to life. He said to me, he said, You have to give testimony because it is true testimony that it, that her, the rest of the healing will happen. So you need to give testimony. And um, so I had never done a testimony in my life. Wow, how do I do this? Yeah. And somehow the Holy Spirit guided me and I just, um, yeah, just gave the story right, like I gave you the story just from the beginning to the end in front of, Oh, I don't know how many people were there. The church was packed. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. My sister-in-law also had people in her prayer group that were praying for her, and she just rang me one day, and she said um, they had a, uh, a message from our Lord saying that you need to make a good confession. And since I made that confession and confessed everything, that's when everything started to turn around. And that was part of your conversion story. Yeah. So that's, I look back now and I think, wow, it's, it's confession is so important because it was almost a week after my confession that everything started to turn around. There's something that happens in there. I say this all the time because most, most Catholics don't go to confession and they think, ah, what's the mm. big deal? And, and a lot of it is guilt because I did that thing. And what's he going to think of me? And trust me, he doesn't care. Yeah. He, he cares about you. The sin is like, let's get rid of that thing. You know? <laughs> you know? yes. He loves you yes. and wants, you know, wants you. Um, yes. There's just something that happens in there that doesn't happen when I'm just talking to yes. God. It's just a beautiful avenue that yes. Jesus gave the apostles. Obviously, you, you, you can forgive sins. And Even though I, I uh, confessed it, I was always with that guilt and at the back of my mind. You know, I can't talk to anybody about it because you hear so many people talking about, you know, abortion so bad. And I used to think, oh, my gosh, how can I talk to anybody about it? Because they're going to look at me as if I'm a criminal, you know. But then when I went to Magigore and I found this amazing peace, I, I could, before even I went and did my uh, general confession there, I I just felt this sense of peace that I could just talk about it. Yeah. And I didn't feel any guilt. It was gone. Well, you were finally trusting, you were finally trusting the forgiveness. We, 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 yeah. we ask for forgiveness and then it just hangs on us with, like you say, the guilt. So yeah. the idea is to say, I actually trust that I've been forgiven. And, and you can then, yeah. you can finally let it go. That's it. God, you have forgiven me. Why should I worry about people's um, judgments, you know? Because the one thing they talk about 
in uh, Medjugorje is do not judge. Do not judge anyone. Let God be the judge. Let's pause right about here. Then more with Ramona here on Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. Quick Patreon shout out. Thank you so much, Amy. Amy M. for being a part of our Patreon family to keep this going week to week to week. Uh, and maybe you're in the boat where I hear this all the time where, yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna support what you're doing. And we believe in the why of that. These conversations are going on between God and us. And, and, and these things do fortify the faith. We're gonna, one of these days, gonna, um, and maybe this is one of those days where you do that. I know Julie was saying that to me the other day, just that, you know, and why she's gonna. And the stories really help to strengthen my faith. Um, listening to other people's stories. It's just, it brings you closer to your faith. That's that's what I can say. And I think a lot of the, you know, when you have a supernatural experience and you can connect with other people who have had those experiences, it just strengthens your faith. That's yeah. that's. Thanks, Julie, because God is speaking to you and me and the church and the world. And this is a way of highlighting the conversations that God is having with us and that this is so real, how, how Jesus is sending Mary to us and waking us up out of our sleepwalking, our coma, so to speak, spiritual and physical, and bringing us right to Jesus. And if this is your gonna day, uh, we'd appreciate you coming here to uh, this episode of touchedbyheaven.net, or you can go to patreon.com and click your way through. All right, let's get back to this episode here, Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. Fast forward uh, four or five years, 2018, uh, Ramona's coming home from a conference and, and things aren't going well again for her daughter. There's more and more seizures. It seems that things are getting worse again. And in her prayer, she's saying, I don't know what to do. You need to guide me. I don't know what to do anymore. I need, I need you to guide me. And she hears a name. And all I had distinctly in my ear was, Take her to the Alfred. So you hear in your drive back, you hear something about going to Alfred. That's all you're getting. Yes. There is a hospital named Alfred. They go to that hospital. They once again induce a coma. They once again take a look at everything in the 26 medications she's on and say, no, nope, let's just do these six medications and let's do this and not that. And let's do this particular infusion. They just kind of change all the medical treatment for. Fallon. It works because the seizures are getting better. That's wonderful. And she couldn't trap her. She couldn't even. When she came out of ICU in, um, in 2013, she could not walk. She could not sit. She could not talk. She could not read or write. And um, all I did was, I don't, one day I was just looking through something, and I found this 54-day rosary novena. And to this day, every time I do, that's how she started walking. She started reading, writing, and she is what she is today is because of the 54-day rosary novena. <laughs> I did novena after novena after novena to our Blessed Mother, and that has that has what has brought her to where she is today. Beautiful. Uh, and certainly you had all those signs too, when you would all gather while she was at the hospital and pray your rosaries together yeah, and, and smell yeah. the roses. The rosary is so powerful, yeah. Uh, before that, was the rosary anything to you? I used to say the rosary, but it didn't probably mean anything to me. Now. Yeah, you were just going down the beads, doing your thing. Hail Marys That's and it. Our Fathers <laughs> and Glory Bees and... Mechanical, yeah. Mar Mary in these apparitions, she often talks about just you know, don't make it mechanical. No, you got to be thinking about. You're supposed to be thinking about the mysteries, about the life of Jesus, and yeah. you know, the life, yeah. death, resurrection of Jesus is what we're supposed to. Because a lot of people don't understand the rosary. It's like why are why are what's with the beads? What's it? No, you're 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 pondering. You're thinking about uh, praying about yeah. uh, these this, these moments in in Jesus' life, his life, death, and resurrection, yeah. and. Um, of course, Mary's a large part of that. Obviously, you know she was she was kind of there, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. and it's and it can be so powerful. Oh yeah. Mary comes to me in many in many ways, but one of the most powerful is just I see that you know that Fatima blue, that Fatima color. Yeah. Uh, you know, I see that. Yeah. I'm seeing it right now. It's just covering my my screen, if you will. Oh uh, wow. Yeah, she's just she's so here, and she so loves you, and so loves your daughter, and 
Oh, loves us all. She's our mom. So, and that rosary, I've heard uh, it described as as our umbilical cord to our heavenly mom. You know? Wow. Uh, I figure if she was good enough for Jesus, she's good enough for us. Exactly. She helped me fight the battle. That's what I did, Trapper, when I went when I went to Magigore after I had found that sense of peace. I just I just surrendered my two aborted babies to her and I said, Mama Mary, please look after them till I am there with them. All is forgiven and uh, so, there's gonna be a family waiting for you in heaven. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I had a priest um, tell me you have to you have to baptize them and release them. So my husband and I sat there. He gave us the prayers, and we sat there one day. We baptized them, and we gave them names, and we released them. I haven't um, heard about the baptism part of this. I've heard about naming the children and all of that. I have not. How do you? What is it a in your mind kind of baptism, or do you actually use water, or what do you do? No, just in our minds as we're praying the prayers that he gave us. Mm -hmm. um, he he said, well, you don't know whether it was a boy or a girl. So he said, you choose two names and you just baptize them. And he gave us the prayers to say. And um, then I went um, to a priest that I, who's actually like my spiritual director here. And I told him about it, and then he prayed with us, and he baptized the children, the babies, and um, yeah, did that with us as well. That's beautiful. So, and I, I felt that sense of peace. Even like I said, I shared things with, um, I shared things with Angeline when she, she wanted to know my conversion story. I like I. I said to Angie, I can't thank you and David enough. And she goes, no, you were called by our Blessed Mother on this so that you can do what you needed to do. And it is so true because I found that sense of peace. Yeah, and they're going to be doing this uh, occasionally, I think, saintly travel down in Australia, saintly travel. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. We had the pleasure of being with them in Magigoria a couple of times. So uh, it's just it's Oh, just awesome. fantastic. Yeah. And that's what Angie said to me. She said, oh. I know someone that would love your your story. And I thought about it. And before I left, I said, yeah, for God's glory, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> oh, you got a lot of elements in this. Power of prayer is in there. Mother Mary's in there. Pope John Paul, the oh, Saint Pope John Paul II is in there. Um, yep. The beautiful witnessing at the end of a mass is in there. Blessed be the reconciliation <laughs> and the confessional. What's our takeaway? <laughs> the power of the sacraments and confession and turn to our blessed mother because she will like at Cana whatever she asks for she will eventually it will happen I've been asking I've always prayed to our blessed mother and said Mama Mary please take me to Magigori before your apparition stops and here we are <laughs> yeah I was there and I was like, am I really here? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know the feeling. It's beautiful. Well, thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you for um, listening to my story and helping me give God glory for what he has done in my life. Amen. All right. I will let you go and spend the evening and I'll either go back to bed or have some coffee. I haven't decided which way I'm going yes. yet. <laughs> Thank you so much for your precious time and getting you out of bed so early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Thanks, Ramona. The sleepwalking, the coma, if you will, physical and spiritual, the awakening that brought Ramona back, that brought daughter Fallon out of the coma physically, but also spiritually is now bringing her closer to Jesus. I'd like to dedicate this episode to my father-in-law, William Brashear. Bill passed away yesterday morning at 5.15 a.m. In fact, he passed away while I was conducting this interview. And in a true Touched by Heaven moment within Touched by Heaven, he passed away while we were talking about him. And I know it was the Holy Spirit nudging Ramona to bring up my father-in-law because as she brought up the topic and I began talking about him, unbeknownst to me, is when he began slipping away from this world into the next. How is your father-in-law, by the way? Is he okay? Uh, my father-in-law is in the process of dying right now, actually. 
He, uh, he is 87 years old. He's been in the hospital or rehab or whatever you want to call these places for uh, a year Mm -hmm. and a third. He went in last Mm -hmm. January of January of last year. He has never gotten out. He's lost a leg along the process. This is, uh, he's just about a week without dialysis now, as that was his choice that, uh, enough. That was yesterday morning between about 5.12 a.m. and 5.15 a.m. And when we are concluding this little conversation about my father-in-law, this wonderful, humble, simple, quiet man, father of eight, wonderful husband, uh, Marianne passed away a few years ago, and just, just an incredible guy. And so within all of that, it's like God wanted everyone to understand within this podcast how God does speak to us in the moment while he was leaving this world and beginning residence in another greater place, in that moment, as you're hearing it, it's happening. And that just gives me chills as I talk about it right now. Oh. Uh, and But you know what? The family is there. I was there a few days ago myself. My wife went back, um, and that's where she is right now. And everyone's just, there's always somebody there with them. There's always family there. And she has a big, my wife has a big family. So he's, uh, he is surrounded and, uh, Mary's there too, you know, Jesus and everybody shows up, you know, you know, we're just yeah. about, we're just about there. And, uh, I, I, I have no doubt where he's headed. When they're ready to take him, they will take him. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for asking. I, I appreciate that. God bless you and your family. God bless you. And thank you. Thank you, God, for in the midst of that conversation, unbeknownst to me, that was the conversation as it ended, also ended this time in this world for William Brashear. God bless you, Bill. Welcome home. That's home. A touched by heaven moment here within the moment. Untouched by heaven, everyday encounters with God. All right. Love to have your story. What is it? You're sitting on something. I know it. You sit, I ask every week and you sit there going, yeah, well. yeah, this is a good time to do it. Uh, get a hold of me or touchedbyheaven.net. All right. All right. See you next week here at Touched by Heaven. Everyday encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack. When you're, when you're ready, you need to give testimony. <laughs> <laughs>